Welcome to Bass Talk, presented by Z-Man Fishing, and I'm Jason Menager, FLW Bass Tour Pro. We're here today with a special guest who has over 25 top 10s on the Bassmaster Trail. He's been to the Classic over eight times, currently sitting in 38th place, Angler of the Year points on the Bassmaster Elite Trail right now, is Stephen Browning. Yeah! Big crowd there, guys. Big crowd. All right. We've we got a... We got a we got a crazy audience today here, studio audience. Big lunch crowd. <laughs> We're loving it. We're loving it. Steven, how you doing today? Doing very well, guys. Doing very well. Hello, Z-Man fans. All right. So uh, you just wrapping up the first two events on the Elite Series. You had a had a really good event to start the season off over there in the St. John's, and then we turned around at Okeechobee, and not so good of event. So what are you thinking right now? You know, that <laughs> – I've been at it for 16 years. Anytime we have back-to-back -back events in, in, in Florida, if I can come out of there with one good finish uh, and, and one not a total bomb, then, then I feel pretty good. Uh, you know, that, it's a long way from, from, from where I live. You don't get a practice in those lakes and those situations very often. So, uh, you know, 50% one, one for two. Uh, I'll take it, and we'll move on to the next. Well, and the good thing is, is that the next event is close to home, right? You're on Bull Shoals. You're in the next state up over Missouri, and uh, we've had a lot of interesting weather over there. We've had a lot of heavy rain. Um, I'm sure the water's probably in the 70 degree range. The fish are probably all over the bank right now, and it's probably going to be a, a, a bed fishing bonanza. Well, it, and it should be, and those that aren't on the bed should be uh, around some of that wood cover, some of that flooded wood cover, and, uh, you know, any time that I can fish in, say, eight feet or less around wood and rock that I can target my cast for pitches and flipping and things of that nature, then uh, I feel very comfortable, and I should feel very comfortable at Bull Shoals. I don't have a lot of history at Bull Shoals, but, you know, it's one of those lakes that... that will remind me of the lakes that I live around here, your DeGray, Hamilton, Washita is, is the, the core group of lakes that I live around. And uh, Bull Shoals is one of those highland reservoirs that, uh, you know, water fluctuates uh, quite often, about six feet high right now. So uh, it should should have some wood, uh, you know, under the water that I can, that I can definitely, uh, you know, uh, concentrate on. Now, is that going to be an issue, too? You talked about the water levels, and, and you know, I know they, they control the level. You had some high water, so if you guys get over there, I mean, it could be, you know, four feet less than what it is right now. So, and then during the tournament, it could drop or it could come up. So that, that probably plays a, a big factor in, in, in sight fishing, I'm sure. It, it does, you know, and, and gang, the, the deal is, um, you know, Bull Shoals has a, a huge capacity capability it has uh, uh, the capability of holding you know 40 feet above uh, normal pool level so you know it can fluctuate a bunch uh, you know the incident that happened last year at table rock the flooding and all uh, tanning como is below table rock they try to keep that as level as possible so anytime that 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 north east arc or northwest arkansas south West Missouri, anytime they get a lot of rain, it goes. they try to run it through those lakes up there and get it to Bull Shoals where they can hold it. So you could see a lot of fluctuation in the water level, uh, you know, over the next couple of weeks. And I, I would determine, you know, exactly where those fish bed. The thing about Bull Shoals, Table Rock, those type of lakes, uh, you know, there are bedding fish in six to eight feet of water. Sure. So, you know, they're hard to see. But yet again, you know, that's just their comfort zone where they like to spawn and they know that, you know, most of the time that water doesn't get sucked out from underneath. So how do you prepare going into this event? You're home for, for another week or so. I'm sure you got a lot of water that's close by. What are you doing right now to prepare for Bull Shoals? Well, right now I'm waiting out a thunderstorm to roll through and, uh, and, and try, to, try to get out on the water a little bit uh, this afternoon and, and probably tomorrow. Um, and, and, you know, I, I'm one of those fortunate enough, you know, you fish for a living, you don't, you don't do a lot of fishing on the weekend. So during the week is kind of my practice time, uh, boat traffic's a lot less, fishing pressure's a lot less, but, uh, you know, I've been concentrating on, on getting better bed fishing. I, I know that, uh, that Bull Shoals should set up for that. 
and uh, you know if it does I want to be prepared so that's that's kind of what I've been doing I've been taking my my zinkers my flapping deads my finesse worms and uh, you know going out and trying to attack these bass around here on our local lakes and uh, and just trying to trying to read the fish a little bit better there's some there's some guys that that uh, I watched out in Jones for in particular uh, down at the uh, St. John's River and listening to him uh, you know analyze what he's thinking out was one of the best bed fishermen in the country and uh, you know he was talking about finding that bait that that when you move it just a little bit that that fish reacts just a little bit to it so you have to pique that fish's interest and that's what I've been doing with these Elastec products, getting out there and finding, you know, running the gauntlet through four or five of them and finding that one right bait that'll, that'll pique that particular fish's interest. And it can change, right, with every fish. I mean, color can make oh, a absolutely. difference, the size of the bait, and, and you've got to try a bunch of different things in, in order to pique their interest, right? And that, that's true. And, uh, you know, I, I normally will have five or six rods rigged up on the deck and, and, and like I said, kind of run through the gauntlet of baits and, uh, you know, and, and try to find that one right one that uh, will make that uh, make that fish react to it. Because once you get those fish reacting to your bait, uh, bed fishing, then you can, you know, then you can do something, you know, you can agitate him enough to, uh, you know, aggravate him enough to, uh, you know, to make him strike. And that's, that's the key thing. Well, by the looks of the wall behind you, I think you got plenty of baits that, that, to try so there <laughs> well there's daniel nussbaum and the great folks at z man they, they take care of me i do have a, a lot of the elastic product you know the thing about it is we, you know you want to have i don't have a lot of different um what would a lot of different styles but i have a lot of different colors and you know i always like to have six or eight different colors of the exact same bait and uh you know that's just just one of those things I try not to vary off, you know, to get way outside the box, but I want to have those proven colors with me at all times, and that's the reason there's probably more Z-Man last egg baits up there on the, on the wall than uh, most folks have. Well, we just got a question in uh, off our Facebook page uh, from a Z fan, Adam Harris, and he's asking about sight fishing. He says, when sight fishing, if a fish seems to be locked on, but you just can't get her to bite, at what point do you move on and try to find another one? Do you have any secret tricks that you may want to try before giving up on that particular fish? You know, Adam, the, the, the one thing that, that I guess my last resort, I'm, uh, you know, I want to try to catch that fish on, on 14 to 20 pound line, even braided line, if you can get them, you know, going on that. And uh, normally when you're throwing those types of baits, you're using the bigger baits, the flapping crawls, the zinkers, and um, you know the lizards and things of the bigger uh, profile baits. But if it, you know, if I have a fish that's locked on and I'm and I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna give her five more minutes and I and I've got to get out of here. I I, I pick up the the the, uh, the spinning rod and reel, uh, six to eight pound gamma line, fluorocarbon line, and I go to a a little four inch finesse worm and you would think I would have one here close by but uh but let me let me dig let me dig eight a little four inch finesse worm and I, and what I do with it I, I'm gonna drop shot it and and what that the deal is if I can't get a fast if, if I can't get him to nose down on a bait then I'm gonna bring the bait up off the bottom a little bit and kinda kinda get it in front of him and um and you know try to tantalize him that way and aggravate him that way and what i'll do and i have one rigged up here is just i'm, I'm going to use a, a, a drop shot and if you guys can see it I, I, it's you know five six inches above the drop shot weight i use a tungsten weight on my drop shot uh, you get a little bit better feel but also on a hard bottom it makes just a little different sound uh, on the bottom when you're moving it so you know, I use a tungsten weight. This is a one-off uh, drop shot hook, and this this little four-inch finesse worm, I'll, I'm going to rig it wacky style, and this little four-inch finesse worm will actually float this hook, so it, it's keeping that bait off the bottom. And uh, and you know, you don't have to put a lot of put a lot of motion. You know, you don't have to incorporate the action in, into it. 
if you'll just let that thing sit and just kind of dead stick it in the you know you get you get a little action out of this out of this worm you can see it's just dangling on that hook that's kind of what it does in the water it just pulsates just enough to uh you know to kind of tantalize that fish and, and make him aggravated and a lot of times you know before i leave this is the bait that i'm going to throw in there and just you know give it one last two rock okay so that's so, that would be my 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 little bed fishing tip for you adam Good deal. Uh, we've got Nick Madison who says, Hey, Stephen, tell us how you pre-fish. Do you set the hook or do you just feel for bites? Please give details. So so when you go in and you're pre-fishing for a event, are you one of those guys who, who set the hook on a lot of fish or you just get the bites and, 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 and leave? Well, yeah, gang, over the years I, I've, I've kind of developed my, my what I would call a flipping cast. And, uh, you know, a, I'm a soft plastic jig kind of guy. And, um, you know, one, the thing that I like to do is, is if I get a bite, I want to, number one, I want to know exactly how hard that fish bit. A lot of times if it's an aggressive bite, that could tell you that there's multiple fish in that area. He wants, that bass wants to get it before the other ones do. So an aggressive bite means that there's probably a few more fish in that area. Number two is I want to, I really want to analyze how that fish swims away with my bait. Uh, if he swims away with it fast, uh, you know, uh, in a hurry kind of motion, more times than not, that's a smaller fish. Uh, a bigger fish will, will be a little bit less of an aggressive bite, and they, they, what I call sit on the bait. You know, they're going to they're gonna hit it, they're going to sit on it, and if, they, if you put a little bit of pressure on them to make them move a little bit, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to dart out. It, there'll be a real slow, very methodical swim away with the bait, and that tells me that's probably a little bit better quality fish. So, I, you know, if I can analyze it by, by that way, I'm not going to do a lot of hook setting. If I need to set the hook on a few fish to kind of give me an idea about the quality that's in that area, then I, you know, then I might have to set the hook a few times. But I, I want to shake a few off before I start setting the hook. Hey, those are those are great tips for everybody at home. How about um, I know I know you've been very uh, involved in designing some of the new baits that Z-Man has come out with here in the last year, and I know there's more coming down the pipe. Uh, are you working with any prototypes right now that that you're using in practice or at these events that that'll be coming up? Well, we are. We uh, right now we have a, a new design on the Chatterbait head, and it's uh, it's it's kind of it's designed to kind of keep a trailer. Uh, a hook or, or trailer uh, to stay up on the head just a little bit better than what we have in the past. Uh, it's, it has like the keeper style jig head on it. Uh, and then it, it's, it's kind of a little flatter to kind of help it come through the cover just a little bit, the heavier cover. Uh, it, you know, it seems to come through the heavier cover uh, better. So you guys be looking for that. And then we also have been working uh, very hard with, with the guys at Z-Man on, on a new Elastec style beaver bait. And uh, we want to get the thickness of the bait just right where the hook point stays in and the bar and all, where it doesn't slide down on a hook. And, and you know, just little things like that, that, that the pro staff give the designer the feedback. And, uh, you know, we tweak it just a little bit to where, to where it fits for us, but we also want it to fit for the consumer. You know, we want the consumer to be able to go rig that bait up easy, uh, you know, standard size or standard hooks to, to come through the bait easy, and uh, you know that's what we. That's our main focus is to making products not only that'll catch fish for us, but kind of help the uh, consumer to uh, you know to catch more fish also. And the and like I, I mean I can't elaborate enough on it with the way these baits sit in the water, with how they can float hooks, how they can you know stand up off the bottom. And it's just a totally different profile. Uh, you know, than, than your standard soft plastics. And then, you know, the 10 times tougher, they don't, they don't tear up like standard soft plastics. So, you know, we, we try to incorporate all that into the new products that will, you know, make them better for the consumer as well as the pro staff. Sounds like you really get your money's worth then on, and you're not. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know. That's great. So, so now, you know, you've got two events under your belt. Uh, you're, you're right there in the, on the classic cut. I know we've got a long way to go. Um, so it's not a bad position to be in, but, but I know it's not where you want to be. You probably want to be a lot 
further up in the standings and a lot safer when it comes time to making another classic. So um, how are you feeling about the next few events, at least the next couple of events, um, and, uh, and the rest of the season here to, here to come? Well, you know, the next two events are, are these Highland Reservoirs. Uh, Bull Shoals will probably be a, a shallow uh, bite going on at Bull Shoals. Probably may be able to catch some a little bit offshore, uh, but, but I think the majority of the fish at Bull Shoals will be caught close to the banks in, in the flooded bushes and, and logs and things of that nature. The changing of the rock, it's a, it's a very rocky style lake, so that, you know, the bank changes and things of that nature will be keying in on those. Feel pretty good about Bull Shoals. Uh, Douglas Lake, the last time I was in Douglas Lake was a mega bucks that Rick Klein won. Y'all do the math on that one. I don't know how many years ago that was, but it's been a long time ago. It and it was an sense. offshore bike at that time. So, um, you know, Carolina rigging should come in, uh, football jigs. Uh, I know that there was an open, uh, BASS open one last year that was an offshore on big swim bait. So, uh, that it, it's a little bit out of my comfort zone, but it's still, I feel like it should fish, you know, if I can catch them on like a football jig with a, a flapping cross behind it or, or Carolina rig, one of the lizards, uh, you know, I, I'll be fine. It's, uh, that could be one of those, you have to survive, getting a check would be very important there. A big finish at Bull Shoals would really be a bonus. Good deal. Hey, on, on a funny note, dude, you... You look so young. You talk about being in this sport for 25 years. You just talk about Rick Klein and all that. When did you start? When you were like 13? Uh, I think I was 12. <laughs> no, I know. I, you know, I started in my mid 20s, and uh, I'll be 46 later on this month. So you know, it's it's been almost 20 years at it, and uh, it doesn't seem like it's been that long. So uh, you know, I, I appreciate the. The, the comment on I don't look my age I, I, that that helps me that helps me a lot, Jason. Well, you've had a, you've had a solid career so far, and I know you got probably twenty or thirty more years left in you. So I'm sure we'll be talking to you one of these days after you win the classic. So but maybe that'll be this year too. So we hope you get there, and uh, I know you got uh, you got certainly a bunch more events to go, but um, I'm sure you're going to be in the thick of things as always. You're one of the most consistent guys on the tour, so. Thanks for coming. We, we loved having you. You're a fan favorite here on Bass Talk, and we look forward to catching up to you again here uh, after the Bull Shoals event. Yeah, that'll be perfect. Be perfect. The best thing about it, you know, the, I don't know if the, the, the Z fans are, are keeping up that, that new um, uh, point system that BASS has. I mean, it's a point per place. It's none of the two points, three points, separation, five points bonus. So it's cut and dry deal. So it, it kind of helps you uh, keep up with it a little bit. Hopefully, after uh, the Bull Shoals events, we're going to go up the leaderboard just a little bit, getting a little bit more comfortable position in the name of the year standings for, uh, you know, kind of the backside of the, the, uh, our season this year. So I appreciate everybody tuning in. Good deal. All right, buddy, we appreciate it. Good luck to you, and we'll talk to you bet. soon in the next couple of weeks. Fantastic. Thanks, gang. Thank you. Bye-bye. You bet.